Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. As we were mentioning, from amongst the fawa'id or fada'il or benefits of fasting, we mention a siyam sabab min asbab taqwa. That fasting is one of the reasons that we attain taqwa from amongst the many reasons. And we mentioned the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu ladina amanu kutiba alaykum musiyamu kama kutiba al ladina min kablakum la'allakum tattakun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, kutiba alaykum siyam. It has been prescribed for you fasting. Similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would gain taqwa, you would gain God-fearfulness. And taqwa habatifillah, as we mentioned, in accordance with the definitions of the Salaf, is that taqwa refers to uh, avoiding the muharamat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and doing the awamr, the commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. So those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as in this ayat, kutiba alaykum siyam, that this is a uh, a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting has been prescribed for you. That means it's a command. And as we've constantly mentioned in many of our lectures in Durus, that al amr yufid al wujub. A command in the Sharia is evidence that it is an obligation. That's the origin. Al amr you feed the wujub. A command in the Sharia from the Quran or the Sunnah means that it's an obligation. Unless there's a sarif, unless there is something else in the Quran or the Sunnah to show us that it is no longer an obligation, but that it is a mustahab, for example, it's recommended, or that it is uh, another one of the other ahkam of the Sharia. Likewise, uh, the other qaida or principle that we want to be aware of that we need to carry with us this knowledge is that the origin of a pro uh, of a uh, prohibition shows that it is haram meaning that it's prohibited or uh, so a nahi you feed a tahrim so the other principle is a nahi you feed a tahrim that whenever there is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits from zina, prohibits us from uh, riba, that means because it's a, a, a prohibition, you know, it, it's a, a command to stay away from something, Allah has prohibited that, then that means you feed a tahrim, that, that the origin of that is that it is haram. That means it is impermissible to do, and when you do it, you gain a sin. And if you leave it, you gain reward. That is what it means when we say haram. But this is not a dars in usul of fiqh, so we won't get off into that too much, but we just want to understand those two uh, principles because they're very relevant to this ayat. Because, as we mentioned, a taqwa, a habitifillah, is that a taqwa is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or God consciousness as they translate it sometimes, meaning that a taqwa, one of the meanings uh, as explained by the Salaf, is that a taqwa is doing the commands of Allah and avoiding His prohibitions. And that includes the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's what taqwa is. That is a protection from the fire. <clears throat> and fasting is one of the ways and means you gain taqwa. You gain taqwa. And let's just look at that. Uh, before we go, before we look at that, uh, another point with this ayat, very important because I, I've seen some YouTube videos and so forth of people who are fasting, especially bodybuilders, some bodybuilders and other people who are into health who are fasting with the Muslims. They're gaining a health benefit, and they gain even their own spiritual development. But they don't receive reward for that with Allah Azza wa Jal. Who is Allah addressing this ayat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
Ya yuladhina amanu. O you who believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing those believers. Who are the believers? Those who in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ أَلِفْ لَا مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابَ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُلٍ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Allah mentioned some of the traits of Ahli Iman, of the people who believe, the people who fall under this ayat, who will receive the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal. Who are the believers? الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ They believe in the ghayb. They believe in the unseen. I have never seen Allah. I've never seen the malaika. I've never seen the Prophet I've never seen the punishment of the grave. I've never seen the comfort of the grave. I've never seen Jannah or Nam. But I believe. I believe in, in, in all of that. That's a part of Iman. That's what distinguishes the believer from the non-believer. The Muslim from the non-Muslim. And that's why the Muslim is the one who is ordered, commanded in this verse, and addressed in this verse. Ya yuladhina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you. It's not the Buddhist, it's not the Sikh, it's not the Hindu, it's not the Christian, it's not the Jew, it's not the fire worshiper, it's not the grave worshiper, it's not this one or that one, but rather it's Ahli Iman. So they will be rewarded for it. They will receive taqwa. Maybe other, another person might fast with the Muslim and gain all kinds of benefits. But they won't receive the ajr, the spiritual ajr, reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And perhaps they may even be guided from that fasting with the Muslim to even become Muslim. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors them with that. But the point I'm making here is this ayat addresses the believer. Ya yuladina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam. And as we said, Kutiba alaykum siyam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded for you fasting. La'alakum tatakun, in order that you would gain taqwa. So this is one of the ways that we gain taqwa. And by fasting, this is a, a spiritual exercise in a sense, in that you are exercising your iman. Because you're refraining from those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has normally made uh, mubah or permissible for you, but you're refraining from them. You're exercising your iman by refraining for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, refraining from eating, from drinking, and if you're married, from having sexual relations. And from all the other things, from excessive, wasted talk, wasted speech, from backbiting, from sinfulness. You are exercising yourself because you're trying more so than usual to be away from munkar, to be away from sinfulness. This is a spiritual exercise. And this is how you gain that taqwa. Because you're, 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 you're practicing, you're making tatbiq, you're making practice of your iman. Another benefit of fasting, because we want to keep these lessons, these sittings very short. Asum <clears throat> Jannah. يَسْتَجُنُّ بِهَا الْعَبْدِ الْمُسْلِمِ مِنَ النَّارِ لِحَدِيثِ جَابِرِ رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال قال ربنا, ربنا عز وجل الصيام جنة يستجن بها العبد من النار وهو لي وأنا أجزي به Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, hadith, uh, in, in a hadith of Qudsi, that means it's a narration the Prophet والسلام, narrated directly on his Lord Subhana, on, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't ta'abud with this. That means we don't read these a hadith like, like it's the Quran, like it's revelation like the Quran. No, it's a different type of revelation. And in this, this, this benefit, so fasting is a protection, and it protects al-abd al-Muslim. Who? The Muslim believer, the Muslim slave from the fire. So fasting is one way you protect yourself from the fire. This is the second benefit that we're mentioning here. Or the third benefit, or the fourth benefit, in fact, is that it protects you from the hellfire, the Muslim. 
And this is in accordance with the hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah the Almighty said uh, or uh, that that uh, uh, yeah that Allah your Lord the, uh, the Almighty said fasting is a shield and it protects the slave from the fire subhanallah we need to fast and it is for me and I reward it so fasting is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of our ibad is for Allah but fasting specifically has a, a specific uh, place uh, with Allah Azza wa Jal. And so fasting, it's a shield. It's a protection. It gives you a barrier between you and the hellfire. And may Allah protect us from the hellfire. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم